I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call to order. I make a motion to accept the commission and the salary board. I second that. All in favor? Go to the salary board. And the one on the salary board is approved the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the uh, June 22nd salary board meeting. I'll second that. Motion by Treasurer Miller, signed by Commissioner Arnold, to approve the minutes of the June 22nd meeting. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item two. I'll make a motion to eliminate ranges seven through nine uh, from the county wage scale and to change all ranges seven through nine uh, in associated positions that is noted. I'll second that. Motion by Treasurer Miller, signed by Commissioner Arnold to approve item two to eliminate ranges seven through nine on the county wage scale. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Three. I make a motion to approve item number three on the agenda. I'll second. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by Treasurer Miller to approve item three on the agenda. Take a full time non union position of Director of Human Resources, 40 hours per week. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item four. I make a motion to approve item number four on the agenda. I'll second. Motion by <clears throat> Commissioner Arnold, signed by Treasurer Miller, to approve item four on the agenda to create the full time non union position as System Database Administrator Budget Coordinator. Around 40 hours a week. Questions or comments? Is that a new position or you have that already? No, it's just a person moving into a different title. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion to approve item number five on the agenda. <clears throat> I'll second. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, signed by Treasurer Miller, to approve item five on the agenda, subsidizing rate for the non union position, Human Resources Administrative Coordinator, to 28000 a year. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Item six. I'll make a motion um, to approve item number six that's listed on the agenda. And I'll second that. I need to do. Uh, um, also add in there uh, doing a, a, uh, to eliminate the system's database administrator detection and full administrative system. Okay. He's got to agree with you that. You okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There'll be two positions to get eliminated. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Item number seven. I'll make a motion to create a part-time non-union temporary position of clerical assistant, not to exceed 25 hours per week, $9.70 per hour in the uh, court's office. I'll second that. Motion by Judge Legg, second by Commissioner Arnold to approve item seven on the agenda, to create the part-time non-union temporary position of clerical assistant to the court's questions or comments. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item eight. I'll also make a motion to create two full-time non-union positions of court recorder slash transcriptionist, minimum of 40 hours per week, salary between $30,000 and $49,000 per year, depending upon experience, six months probation, benefits according to government mandated requirements, county personnel manual for my recommendation. I'll second that. <clears throat> motion by Judge Lake, signed by Commissioner Arnold, to approve item eight. Create the two full time non union positions of court recorder transcriptionist, number 40 hours a week. Questions or comments? Yes. When you say create positions, that, does that mean two new transcriptionists? And then if you look at the next one, they're getting eliminated from other positions. So the head counts the same, the titles are getting changed. So the same people are still transcriptionists? Yes. Well, they're not yet. Yeah, we're changing the position, just so we're clear. Hmm. Um, the how? OPC is. Changing the way that court transcripts are performed. Uh, there's new rules coming out next year. Essentially, it used to be that they were independent contractors and they got paid themselves for the work that they do. Oh, yeah. It's now going to be a situation where you petition the court and the county is paid 
for the transcripts. So this is modeled after Monroe County's position. <coughs> it's also going to be adding duties to them. In essence, they're going to be performing what the clerk of court monetary used to do in the court. That will allow the clerk of court monetary to be down here right. doing what needs to be done in the office as opposed to sitting in court and doing some of the stuff. So hopefully providing them with more time to do their clerical functions in the clerk of court monetary's office. So then we can pay the county directly for transcripts. When, when the new rule, yes. When the new rule gets in, when will that kick in? Well, it's going to affect today's date, whatever it is. These new positions, that's how that, that'll work. Anything they're doing under their old job, they're still allowed to go for. So, and then moving how forward, yes. And moving forward, yes. And how about the price per page and all that? Will that be the same? How we'll about the price? Have, the court will set a schedule for that. I don't plan on changing the price the way it is right now. Oh, okay. Come next year, I don't know if the AOPC plans to have a statewide price per page. I haven't got that um, yet. It's still in the rulemaking process. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Make a motion to eliminate the two current positions, of course, in our report. And I'll second that. Motion by Judge Lake, seconded by Commissioner Arnold to approve item 9 to eliminate the two current positions of court stenographer. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Right. Item number 10. I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve item number 10 as presented on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Sheriff Benedict, signed by Commissioner Arnold, to approve item 10 on the agenda, the month's salary of the deputy, Chief Deputy Sheriff John Record. Um, to 1915 per hour. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to make a motion to increase the number of temporary part-time drug DUI task force county detectives from the current number of 11 to 16. The rate is $15 per hour for my recommendation. I'll second that. Motion by District Attorney Klein, seconded by Commissioner Arnold to approve item 11 on the agenda and increase the number of temporary part-time drug DUI task force detectives from 11 to 16. Questions or comments? Yes. Do they have a set number of hours, less than that kind of thing, like some of the other positions do? Those positions are funded through uh, a separate uh, fund mm -hmm. and they're used on a needed basis. Okay. So if we have an operation going on, we go down the list and say, okay, are you available, are you available? until we get enough people to do whatever we're doing, whether it be a saturation patrol or a, um, uh, a by bus with drugs, whatever it might be, uh, we need to have the options to, to right. call the people in. It really has no impact on um, additional funding or anything. No, no, I, my question was, are, do they have a not to exceed a certain number of hours per? No, we just, just, we don't use them needed. that much, right? Okay. It's, it's as needed. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, can I ask, you know, how's the drug situation doing as far as uh, incidences or drug busts, like you mentioned? Is that any less now the past six months or getting worse? Or can you give any report on the drug situation? We, we have some serious challenges in this county, and it's not just with um, the enforcement part. We, we've got to do uh, more with education and treatment. We're working with uh, many partners in order to increase the options for people to receive treatment. We cannot just incarcerate our way out of this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I good. will note that our drug take back program is working well. We did a take back in Bridgewater Township. We uh, partnered with them when they were doing the recycling and we pulled off about 34 pounds of drugs off the street that were turned in uh, to the van and it was there for about four hours. So the, the awareness that we're trying to create uh, is, is working. Our drug reporting form is working. Um, all the things are working, but we have a lot of work ahead of us uh, and we have a lot of challenges. But um, uh, more and more people are stepping up to uh, offer assistance, whether it be through uh, um, partnerships like the Take Back program or uh, coming up with creative ways to provide more treatment and services for our uh, people that are suffering from addiction. And when you say take back program, you're talking about medicine like legal drugs, not illegal drugs you're Correct. taking back. Correct. That is a direct line to uh, the use of heroin. Um, 
most people will start by use, abusing prescription medications that are readily available in um, everyone's medicine cabinet. Um, the, the fact that um, we have such a, a casual attitude towards drugs is a major problem. We have got to treat them with the uh, respect and concern that you would a firearm. Uh, if you walked into my house and saw a firearm just laying on the table, uh, not secured, you, you'd look at me like I have three heads. What are you doing? Why are you being so irresponsible? But yet if I had knee surgery and a bottle of um, Percocet sitting on the kitchen table, no one would think twice. We have to change the way people think about drugs and how they handle the drugs. If you're done with your prescription, dispose of it correctly. Don't flush it down the toilet. Um, put it in a drop box. We have one right here in the courthouse and uh, we will be putting more of them out throughout the community. Any other questions? Sure. Yeah, speaking of heroin, uh, if somebody is taken to the jail and they're, a heroin, they're an addict, is there a provision um, for them in the jail? Uh, recently, somebody like an addict died while they were in jail. Is, what do you do in a case like that? Mm. We have, um, and, and the sheriff may want to speak uh, better to that. I know the warden would be a, in the best position to speak to that. There is protocols where they're evaluated when they come in. Uh, and they have to be medically cleared. Um, we do take uh, the safety of the prisoners seriously. Uh, there is a doctor uh, that examines the prisoners, and um, uh, I'm not sure that the jail would even accept somebody if they were in, in that bad a condition uh, where they were uh, detoxing. So it's, it's putting strain on every aspect of the system, uh, but we are working towards increasing the number of options for people that have addiction issues in the county jail with respect to classes and the number of options that they have. One size does not fit all. Mm -hmm. That's why we're trying to create as many opportunities for treatment and uh, rehabilitation as possible. Thank you. Now, are you saying that somebody died in Susquehanna, Susquehanna County Jail? No. no. Oh, someplace else? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any additional public comment on the salary work? <clears throat> Any motion to close the salary committee and attend the commission meeting? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. Salary board is closed. We're back to commission meeting. Thank you, Judge. I make a motion to approve item number five on the agenda. Second that. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by Commissioner Hall to approve item five on the agenda for the minutes of the July 13th meeting. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Six. Make a motion to approve item number six on the agenda. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by Commissioner Hall to approve item six on the agenda to prove that you ratify and approve the following cash disbursements and electronic payments. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to approve item number seven on the agenda. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by Commissioner Hall, to approve item seven on the agenda to ratify approve the following uh, listed seminars and requests for payments. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to approve item number six on, or er, I'm sorry, eight on the agenda. I'll make the second. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, to, and second by Commissioner Hall, acknowledge with regret the resignation of Sue Edelston from the with the Ontario Clerk of Courts, back to July 29th. Questions or comments? Yes. Will that mean she's, Susan is not working anyplace else in the courthouse, or is, she'll be out completely? She'll be out completely. And this will start July 29th? Yes. Does she give a reason? Is there a reason for this? Or? Um, it's a personnel issue. There was a recent scuttle. A recent scuttle, right? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to approve item number nine on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by Commissioner Hall to ratify and acknowledge the placement of Christine Jones in Milford to the position of acting first deputy clerk of courts in addition to her personal position as first deputy for Thonetary. Effective July 19th. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to approve item number 10 on the agenda. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by Commissioner Hall, ratify and acknowledge the transfer of Sharon Jones of Susquehanna from Domestic Relations Intake Officer to the open position of Domestic Relations Conference Officer, 1025 per hour, 40 hours. Questions or comments? 
Is it Jones or James? Because you said Jones. James, I'm James. sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to approve item number 11 on the agenda. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by Commissioner Hall to acknowledge with regret the resignation of Kimberly Gregory of Montrose from the position of Financial Enforcement Officer effective July 15, 2016. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to approve item number 12 on the agenda. Second time. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by Commissioner Hall to acknowledge the hiring of Katherine Stanzel of Hot Bottom to the open full-time position in the Sheriff's Deputy's position at 13.50 per hour. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Make a motion to approve item number 13 on the agenda. <clears throat> second that. Motion to, by Commissioner Arnold, second by Commissioner Hall, accept the designation of Joan Berman in New Milford from the union position of second deputy clerk of courts, effective July 31st, 2016, and to acknowledge a transfer <clears throat> to the non-union position of first deputy clerk of courts at 28,000 per year. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to approve item number 14 on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by Commissioner Hall to acknowledge the hiring of Susan Lathrop of Montrose to the open non-union position of first deputy of the planetary, $28,000 per year, effective August 1st. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 15. I make a motion to approve item number 15 on the agenda. I will second that. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by, motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by Commissioner Hall to approve the transfer of Janine Cochran and New Melford from the Human Resources Administrative Coordinator to the open position of Director of Human Resources. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I make the motion to approve item number 16 on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by Commissioner Hall to approve the transfer of Sally Hawley of Montrose from the System Data Database Administrative Technical Administrative Assistant to the open position of System Database Administrator Budget Coordinator. Questions or comments? Sure. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to approve item number 17. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by Commissioner Hall to approve the transfer of Brian James of Susquehanna from the Human Resources Administrative Clerk to the open position of Human Resources Administrative Coordinator. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to approve item number 18 on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by Commissioner Hall to approve the transfer of Amy Curley and Laura Shelp from the court stano to the open positions of court record transcriptionist, minimum 40 hours per week and salary of 49,000. Questions or comments? So these ladies were independent, is that, is that correct? Not entirely. They were, they were county employees, but they also did independent work on, also. I see. So now it's kind of pulled them both into one. So their independent part got pulled into the county the revenue that they were getting outside is now coming to the county, and now we are we were still paying them before, but we were paying them as a subcontractor before. Thank but you. now we're getting, at least getting the revenue for what they were getting. Yes. Now, is since they're not getting the outside income for their transcripts and their work, is the salary the same? No, it's not the same. The salary increases to compensate for the salary they're losing from the outside. That's, so that's what I'm wondering. So the salary right. went up to compensate for that right. difference. Right. Can you say how much it went up? Mm, I don't have those numbers. We can get those for it. And then it says the benefits on all these different positions, government mandated requirements. Mm -hmm. What benefits specifically can you mention or talk about? <coughs> well, you have the, uh, the um, 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 affordable health care. They're entitled to their health insurance. Uh, they have their pension. They have their sick days, their personal days, their vacation days. Mm. Now, do they have to always pay some kind of copay with their health insurance? Right now, all the, all the employees of the county pay a copay. They pay a copay to the county for their health insurance. Can you say how much that is? Is it always is it the same for everybody? It no, it depends on the level. Um, like the commissioners pay 25 percent. We're the highest. We pay 25 percent of our health insurance costs. Uh, the lowest is 10 percent, and those are uh, positions that started at range 10, 11, and 12. And if you get into the elected positions. They're higher as well as uh, department heads because they make a lot more money. 
Uh, so if you have to pay 25%, can you say what you actually pay per month for health insurance? I mean, how expensive is it? Well, for a family plan, it costs about $18,000 a year. So if I had a family plan, it'd be 25% of that. So it hasn't gone down with Obamacare for you, or has it gone up? No, nobody's insurance went down. It all went up. Well, people who have uh, very low income, it went down, or no income, it went down okay, well, for we're, them. We're, we're, uh, we're a business, so it doesn't go down for us. For you guys, it didn't go you know, down. Again, you got to understand that you know the insurance companies spread it around <coughs> to those that can pay more, and so they go after the businesses and have those people pay more. So the cost continues to go up on a yearly basis. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 19. Make a motion to approve item number 19 on the agenda. Second that. Motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by Commissioner Hall to approve and sign the Transportation Service Agreement with Treehab of uh, Montrose for term of July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2017. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to approve number 20 on the agenda. I'll second that. <clears throat> motion by Commissioner Arnold, second by Commissioner Hall, approve item 20 on the agenda to approve and sign the contract of House of Detention Bed Sales uh, for a term of uh, July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2017 for children and youth and probation. Questions or comments? Can you say more about that? Um, yeah, if we have a child that's, that's on probation that gets placed, you know, this is an organization that they use. And basically, somebody that that's on probation, a juvenile that gets placed in, at, under the under the direction of the courts or whatever, mm. uh, it gets funded for juvenile and youth, and that's why it's on. And what age group is that usually? The youth on probation, which usually, is usually uh, youth. I don't know. Under eighteen. Under eighteen. Under eighteen. Under eighteen. Then they can be on probation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 21. I make a motion to approve item number 21 on the agenda. I'll second that. Uh, motion by Christian Arnold, second by Christian Hall to sign the file and purchase of service agreements between Susquehanna County, Children and Youth. One is with Catholic Social Services, Diocese of Scranton. Uh, that's for adoption uh, studies that they do for us. Uh, the next one is for um, Justice Works Youth Care in Pittsburgh. Uh, they do family group and uh, parenting classes, but they do that here. Uh, and the next one is for uh, concerned professional services out of Lehighton, and that's uh, with foster care. They help us with that. And uh, the next one is for United Network Incorporated in Muncie. Uh, we currently don't have anybody in that right now. There was one person back in 2015 that was in it. Um, we also have um, children's service service center of Wyoming Valley. Uh, again, we don't have anybody in that right now. We had one uh, back in 2015. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? Yes. Uh, can you say how many children are in foster care in our county at this time, and is that on the increase this year? I couldn't tell you. You'd have to you could check with uh, uh, the children and youth director to see if she has those statistics. I don't know if she has all those statistics. They may only have what they do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> public comment. Any questions? <laughs> questions, comments? Here. Uh, I'd like to know your definition. Last time you spoke about uh, environmentally friendly industries, that Susquehanna County welcomes them and wants them to be environmentally friendly. Can you give a def definition for the county? Of what is environmentally friendly? No, I would not give a definition for the county. That's a legal issue, and I would ask the solicitor, someone that has the the uh, legal expertise, to make that determination. So you don't have the legal definition from the solicitor. No, I do not. So we can you ask him that for the next meeting, or otherwise no, we can ask him. Sure. And, the, and the solicitor is Mr. Mike Jean Greco. That's correct. And then has he given you any advice? as far as what can be done for the county to be able to have a municipal or let's say a countywide air ordinance so that we can keep out polluting non-friendly environmentally friendly industries and has he given you any advice what can be done can the county make some kind of a
countywide ordinance, so we're protected. Well, I've had conversations with him, and again, he is reviewing it and working with other solicitors, and um, and still has an, and still advises us to wait and see what the um, municipalities are going to make out with with what action they're taking, <clears throat> and then he'll advise from there. So he's not advising you to just do a countywide ordinance no, he's at not. this time. Um, you know, when this all started with the incinerator, the county said it was up to the townships to um, come up with an ordinance, and the townships said they weren't sure about it. It was up to the um, up to the county. <coughs> well, I think New Milford Township um, supervisors have done a great job so mm -hmm. far, really looking into this, contacting their attorney, mm -hmm. trying to see what type of ordinance they can put into place. Um, if anybody was at the last township meeting, the county would understand that there are a lot of people that are showing up that are not just from New Milford Township, from Susquehanna County because they're very concerned. You hold your meetings at a convenient time. Unfortunately, most of the people can't come here because of the time. So the township and the township supervisors are getting the brunt of this so-called um, industry that wants to come into our county. Um, if you look at the Pennsylvania statute 35 PS 412, it clearly states that it says, <laughs> nothing in this act shall prevent counties, cities, towns, or townships, or boroughs from enacting ordinances <coughs> with respect to air pollution, which will not be less than strengthen the provisions of this act. So you do have the authority to put an ordinance in place. You do have attorneys. You also have way more money than the township. You also should be very well aware that there are way more people than New Milford residents that are very concerned. I don't think it's fair that the county has dumped this on the township and the township supervisors are holding the brunt of having to deal with the community, having to deal with people being very upset people coming to the meeting, wanting to speak, and basically not being allowed to speak because they're not in New Milford Township, when everybody at this point is very well aware that it's going to affect way more people than New Milford Township. Also, an industry like this has a lot of money. Well, the county has way more money than the township. So I think mm -hmm. we need to stop kind of saying it's their responsibility, it's your responsibility, and yeah, you're looking into it, but you need to look into it seriously now, not after the fact, because after the fact, we're going to be behind the ball and we're not going to be able to do anything about it. Also, there is a group of concerned people. In the beginning, you know, everybody was kind of doing their own thing. There was a group of people that have been meeting. They've actually kind of come up with this little catchy name. They call themselves Susquehanna Clean Air Network. And they're looking into all the different avenues of what can be done. As citizens, we can be concerned. We can do all the research in the world. It's not going to help us one darn bit if the county's not behind it and the township's not behind it. Now we've got the township behind it. I really believe they're going in the right direction. Now it's time for the county to step up. You guys have a lot more money than the township does. The other thing is, yes, DEP. We need to be addressing DEP. We need to look at what we can do for DEP. And this group is getting organized and we are looking through DEP. What can we do as citizens to go through DEP? Unfortunately, we would have to wait for permits to be filed before we have a voice with DEP. At this point, mm -hmm. we have absolutely no voice with DEP. We do not want to wait for this company to invest the money, go through the process of preparing the permits because it's going to cost them a small fortune to get those permits correct before they submit it to DEP. Once a company invests that kind of money, they're going to have their claws in and they're going to fight harder. So yes, we understand this is not an easy process. This is not something that's going to be done overnight. And we are looking into all the avenues of getting this stopped to protect ourselves, to protect our farmlands, to protect the homes that we live in. So I'm asking the county at this point we are doing our homework as citizens. We are looking at every avenue, step one, step two. We've got some things in place. But now I think we're looking at you as the county commissioners with a lot more money, I'll say it again, than the township has. 
-hmm. to start doing something to show the community, Susquehanna County, not just New Milford Township, that this is a uniform front township supervisors. I think that should be part of your job is to provide that support to your township supervisors. They are doing everything they can do, but they are limited as a township. You have way more authority as county commissioners. So looking into it, looking into it, looking into it, I don't want to keep coming here every couple of weeks and here we're looking into it. I want to hear we've looked into it and this is the action we're going to take. When is that going to happen? I said we'll get with us and go from there. Yes. That's no answer. <laughs> okay. Commissioner Hall, mm -hmm. you have stated publicly to media, Susquehanna County is open for business. Mm -hmm. You want a $20,000 grant from the Progress Authority mm -hmm. to run an ad campaign to attract industry to the abundant natural gas in our county. That's not true. Industry like plastics, chemicals, and incinerators. You know we have no zoning and no air ordinances. Mm -hmm. We deserve a county-wide health protective air ordinance. We know the county solicitor, the county commissioners, the planning commission, and the new Milford supervisors have not been transparent about the Tyler Corners. That's private, not true either, but keep going. Private for-profit industrial incinerator project to import waste by rail <coughs> from out of state. We know you all knew at least as far back as April 8, 2016. And we know for a fact it was to be kept a big secret from the public until the project was further along and too late to stop. We deserve better. Our children and grandchildren deserve better. And you and your grandchildren deserve better for that matter. We all deserve a countywide air ordinance drafted by an environmental law firm with a history of representing communities against offenders of the environment, big polluters, mm -hmm. unlike the firm of Eckert and Siemens. It's mm -hmm. the biggest firm that takes on, it mm -hmm. represents the polluters. So um, New Milford Township is not getting that good of a deal with Eckert and Siemens. Um, we want you to hire a law firm like Jordan Yeager of, Cur of Curtin and Hefner LLP that has successfully represented communities. All of our families deserve better to have the best environmental law firm to draft a health protective air ordinance, ordinance with complete transparency. In an aside, I am taking this opportunity to note that the conflict of interest in the proposed incinerator matter that there is. Former Commissioner Michael G. and Greco, who now serves as solicitor to the Susquehanna County Commissioners and therefore solicitor to the County Planning Commission, presents a conflict of interest by the fact on April 8th he welcomed Tyler, Tyler Corners Group into the county and more specifically invited um, the New Milford Township Robert Templeton, Alan Hall, and Benny Diaz to view the site. In my mind's eye, it, calls, it, 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 it calls into question his objectivity and may, may explain mm -hmm. why the, the dragging of the feet is being looked into. In support, um, a conflict of interest exists when one, our county solicitor, is serving or attempting to serve two or more interests. He cannot serve the interest of the county and the planning commission and all the citizens and be, be a favorable to Tyler Corners. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, can you say, Alan, what is not true? You mentioned not true Listen, about you know, three <clears throat> times. Based on, based on the responses I'm reading on Facebook, the personal tax, the personal tax on my family, Nobody's interested here in getting the facts or the truth of what's going on. You harass my family, you threaten my family. I said, you know, nobody cares. Nobody's come to my office except for one or two people and asked me what's going on. And that's it. Everything else is on Facebook. There's lies on there about I toured the site. That's not true. 
Uh, as far as Mr. Jim Greco goes, now you're making an accusation that he's in bed with Tyler Corners. Uh, is there any facts to that or any proof to that? Or is it all just what everybody keeps repeating on Facebook? It's all what everybody keeps repeating on Facebook. You know, that everybody's trying to hide something, that the supervisors, the solicitors, the planning commission, we get the same information that you're getting from Tyler Corners, which is on their public website. They don't call us, they don't talk to us. Mary Ann has tried talking to them. They give her the same information and they don't give her any more information. Mm -hmm. So we're not hiding anything and there's nothing to be hiding. And there is, and the last accusation is that, that was made was I'm making all kinds of money off this deal. I am not involved in this deal. I don't even know who these people are except for one individual. Which I don't know anything about. It. And who's the individual? And the only individual I know about is the one that's been releasing stuff and that's Mr. Tom Donato. And that's the only one. And that's the same information that you have. Right. So, you know, people last week continued to go on my, my <laughs> Facebook page, which I try to update people in the county mm -hmm. as to what's going on and attack me on there mm -hmm. and put stuff on there. You know, nobody wants to know the truth. Nobody wants to know what really has happened here at the county. You know, we've got this mass media going on right now of that we've got this huge conspiracy, and that's what people want to believe, and that's far from the truth. Yes. In the back. I have a request. Okay. And I have to read this because I can't remember. Uh, while we see the benefit of an industrial park, with your example of Dick's Sporting Goods Warehouse inquiry to locate here, mm -hmm. a business that is in the industrial category that would have provided a sizable number of permanent jobs mm -hmm. with a minimum of air pollution, it has become apparent that there may very well be an effort on the part of some to attract the most health harmful manufacturing industries in the United States to Susquehanna County. For this reason, I speak for myself and also as a representative of the <coughs> Easy Susquehanna County and for the increasing number of residents and businesses petitioning you to pass a clean air ordinance for Susquehanna County. While we, have, while we have petitioned you to pass this ordinance, we now find it necessary to also be more specific. Because the writing and defending of such an ordinance is a specialty, we did our own homework looking for the best qualified for our needs and most highly recommended by the majority of our inquiries. And also because we hear that the law firm hired by New Milford Township does not have the reputation that fits the needs we ask of you, that you pass an effective health protective ordinance. It has been said of Eckert and Siemens, <coughs> a law firm reportedly hired by New Milford Township, that they usually represent large, heavy industrial clients like hazardous waste generators and plastics and chemical manufacturers. These corporations seek a weak ordinance that they can easily comply with and a law firm that will help them avoid liability from federal and state agencies and the public at large. We need an ordinance that protects us and a law firm that has a history of defending just such ordinances. So for the reasons explained above, we offer our recommendation and ask that you seriously consider Mr. Jordan Yeager partner at Curtin and Hefner, environmental law, public sector law, employment and labor law, etc., etc. We welcome further conversation with you on this and thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Yes. Um, I understand that this is a hot topic mm -hmm. and I think it's unfair that people are personally attacking our township supervisors or our commissioners. However, as a commissioner, it is unfair for you to say that nobody cares and that do not lump us all into that situation. My husband, myself, my family, a lot of other people do not stoop to calling names. Do not go to that level. So please do not lump us all in that because it would be the same thing as everybody saying that all politicians are corrupt. Not fair, okay? So as county commissioners, if you wanna take some of the heat off don't come in here week after week and say we're looking into it, we're looking into it. I looked into it, I've got the law in my hands, and I'm not a county commissioner, I'm not getting paid for this. It's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to my family, to do what's right. 
I would not break the law. I would not threaten. We're asking nicely. We've been, you know, yes, you're going to find a group of people that are always going to get upset and a group of people that are going to stoop to doing things like that. And you know, gossip goes around. This is Susquehanna County. Pete's sake, gossip is the number one pastime. Throw out, you know, you guys, you guys went for this job. You asked to be elected. We elected you. Throw a tough skin. It's part of it. It's part, it's unfair, but it's part of it. Do the right thing. Do the right thing for the community. And those people that are name calling and pointing fingers will go away. That's all I'm asking. Don't. Well, you, again, you're it. making the assumption that we are doing absolutely nothing. Well, <clears throat> and, may, and maybe that does look like it is on the surface. But behind the scenes, there are several things that we're working on. Okay. Can you tell so us? No, I cannot tell you at this time. Okay, and that's fine. And I, and I also understand that, you know, with lawyers and with attorneys, you know, we're not going to, I'm sure there's somebody somewhere that is listening, comes to the meetings, that's part of the title corners. You don't want well, to put out. Broadcast, so those are as well. You don't want to put out your whole deck. It's like playing poker with leaving your key Thank cards you. on the table, well, and you. we understand that, okay? But just. And I do know yeah. that um, you know Bob Templeton's meeting last night. Uh, he was given a petition about uh, again about trying to get the uh, an air quality study done, and uh, you know and I think that's a pretty good idea, and. Uh, it's something that we are looking into right now. Actually, it's something I've been working on for the last year, um, actually through PEMDOT for an absolute another reason. Uh, but um, I, you know, I think it's a good idea, and I've asked Bob to push that on to the solicitor review to make sure that the request we ask is written in a way that it doesn't get get us jammed up and sued. So that is something that uh, one of the things that we are looking at right now. The other thing we're looking at, of course. Is and, and yes, you know, I am well aware of what the code says. The code says the county can pass any ordinance it wants at any time. But it's not about just passing an ordinance. It's about the administration of it. It's about the liability of it. It's about whether the, the comprehensive plan that we have goes along with it. And our comprehensive plan that we have in this county that came from a, a study done with the municipalities and the residents of the communities was that they wanted nothing forced from the county down. So now does that mean our county plan is updated needs to be updated? Well, that's one thing we're looking at right now and, and looking at updating that. But if you've got to decide when you're going to take and deal with the wishes of the public. The public said before, we want the county not involved in zoning. We don't want the county involved in the ordinances. We want that left to the municipalities. Now, if that's changed, that's fine. And, that and as that? you say, you know, the county does have more money. The county doesn't have any money. It's the taxpayers' money. So, you know, if, if you want to put, if the, if the county uh, looks at doing something like that, it's not about the million dollars it costs to put the department in and the technology to do it. It's the millions of dollars it costs for the, for the attorneys that we're going to have to have when we get into litigation. Because if we start citing people, if you do put an air quality ordinance in, you start citing people, and they challenge it, well, we're not going to really be able to use an attorney here. We're going to have to go someplace to make sure we have top-line attorneys that are going to charge us a fortune to take and do that, which means you as the taxpayer are going to pay for all that. Now, I'm not saying, and please nobody put words in my mouth, that I'm saying that you know the cost out, outweighs doing what's right for our community. I've lived here all my life. I plan on staying here all my life. My family's here. So this is very important to me also. When was the last time that plan was done or updated? The plan was last done in 2003. It's due to be updated now, which we've already started the process on. Okay. Are there, you've started the process on updating the plan. Yeah. What involved, who's involved in that? Um, how do? It goes through, actually, um, there's several stages to it. We've already done the, the housing feasibility study. We did the business park study. The demographic studies were done by Northern Tier plus some of the other agencies. So those studies are done. Now we've already talked to the consultant. The consultant we're getting ready to bring online to take and start rewriting the plan, putting the plan together. And the input from the community, what part that, is that? That part is part of it. Uh, actually what happened in the last plan, which I'm sure they'll probably follow the same suit, is they send out surveys to the public. They send out surveys to the municipalities the officials and they send out surveys out to the public and get the public feedback okay how do you want your government to run do you want all the control here do you want 
somebody in Montreal is making a decision what you can and can't do with your property, or do you want it left to the local municipalities? Okay, so if that plan is in the process, do you have any idea of how long that will take to complete? It'll, it'll take a while. I, you know, I haven't talked to the consultant yet. Uh, that's the <laughs> next step to talk to him. Um, he's been sending information into the planning commission now. So once we can talk to him and see what his timetable is, then we can go from there. But to get the surveys out, get those done, and get them all out, you know, that'll take some time. It won't be, you know, it'll take months, I'm sure. In the meantime, we'll continue to work on the other avenues that we have to see what we can do. Well, that's information that you have not provided with this group before. And it's nice to give us some information to understand that you are in the process of doing something. <coughs> Well, like I said, uh, you know, we'll do everything we can at this point. Yes. Um, some of this is going to be a little repetitive of what mm -hmm. other people said, but mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm better at reading what I'm going to say. All right. All right um, my name is Donna Benjamin. I'm from the Halstead Borough. I am disappointed because I came to you two weeks ago. I petitioned along with about 400 other people that the commissioners to act immediately to protect the health and air quality of our county residents. By drafting and passing a legally defensible air ordinance, the county will be responsible for monitoring and enforcing. In light of increasing industry interest in our county, like the industrial incinerator Tyler Corners plans to build in New Milford Township, and nothing is on the agenda today concerning this. By now, you have seen there are signs people are putting in their yards to demonstrate that this is not what this county needs and that people are banding together on social media and in meeting rooms across the county. I myself even had the pleasure of speaking with the Northern Tier Coalition about the impacts that an incinerator would have on our county. We do need jobs in this area, but not ones that would cause more harm than good. As a community, we need to look out for ourselves because if we don't, who will? Today, I am asking what progress has been made toward introducing a clean air ordinance the people of this county have requested, and how soon do you anticipate it to be completed and implemented? And I have two, another part. Um, because, there, um, because there's no reason that both the county and the township to pass a clean air ordinance. Special, you have also mentioned last meeting that a special meeting concerning a clean ordinance could be done um, during a time in the evening that more people would be available for. Have you set up such a meeting? No, I have not. With, based on the recent threats, I don't know if I'll hold a public meeting where I don't have the protection of the sheriff department sitting here. Okay. Oh dear. Oh dear. That's terrible. Well, I know it's terrible. I'm so sorry. You know? My family's been attacked, I've been attacked. So what do you want me to tell you? You want me to go stand out in the middle of a green where somebody that doesn't care about drives by and throws a, throws a shot at me? You can have special meetings at the school and there's other venues there besides the There is no the green. venue at that school to make sure that we're protected. There's no metal detectors, there's no nothing. And can I'll you remind you of the township supervisors meeting down in the southern part of Pennsylvania where two of the township supervisors got shot. Yeah. So. Now, I realize the people here, and you know, the people here, the majority here, or all the people here are good citizens and want the best. And I understand that. And you're law-abiding citizens, and, and, you don't, and you don't support activity like that. Right. But unfortunately, you can't control all the other people that are out there no more than I can, and the actions they take and the foolish things that they do. Having a meeting would show the people that you are trying to help them, and there's that. no reason why if somebody really wanted to go after you, they could just do it anywhere. I mean, I've seen you myself at the grocery store. Well, I you don't understand. Walk around. And the difference between there and here, there I'm carrying. Here I can't carry. Ooh. So. So you can't carry even though you're a commissioner? No. You can't. Um, All right. But I mean. If someone really was going to do something, that that's not going to stop them. I mean, they. Could well, I'm not going to make it real easy for me. <laughs> yeah, and so. I understand what you're saying. Listen, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. And I did go to a public forum, and it was one that Julianne had at the church. Mm -hmm. And again, I was at the church, and yes, there was people there that wanted to listen to the message. There was other people there that all they wanted to do was attack me. 
So I understand that, but I've already been at one public forum, and based on the activity since that public forum, I'm not foolish enough to go out in the middle of a green or in a public setting where I'm going to be put in harm's way, and then, you know, what are you going to tell my family when something happens? Will you please consider coming to the August 16th meeting at Blue Ridge if we can figure out a way to um, get a detector so that people are, or frisked or something? I do know that uh, based on your information I read that you invited Tyler Corners to that meeting. Yes. And I hope they show up. Me too. Because, again, if you're asking me information, the only information we have is what we've given. The only people that have any information is Tyler Corners, and they're not sharing. Well, the reason why <coughs> I would like your attendance there, especially you, <coughs> because um, there's going to be an, a, a national expert there, an international expert there. So you yourself could become educated on the particulate matter, the dioxins, and you know, and this will go to concern for not only your citizens, but for your, whole, your family. Mm -hmm. So will you consider coming? I'll consider it. I won't make a definite decision now. All right. Yes. I have a suggestion if you would consider coming. I mean, we are talking about a school district that protects our children every day, so there are ways of providing security for that. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people here, a lot of people that belong to the, to the group that want to see this done that would help set up tables, make sure lines were in order, so you had to go through a line, you'd have somebody with a scanner, just as we came into the courthouse, scan everybody before they come in sure. so that you do feel that you have the safety there and like you said there are a lot of concerned citizens that will do everything they can do to support the township and the county to make sure that this gets done and we keep our homes the way we love them so if that's something that the commissioners would consider please contact any one of us and we'd be more than willing I know I would be more than willing you would too right <laughs> be more than willing to set up some type of, you know, when when they have assemblies at Blue Ridge, there are tables, people have to sign in, they go through a security check before they're allowed in the auditorium. We'd, we'd be more than willing to help out with that if that's a possibility. And Sheriff Benedict, can you offer any help that night? Or do we have, do we have to pay? Uh, it's a league-sponsored event, um, so the, there'll be no, it, it's, we're meant to be objective. That's why we'd like Tyler Corners to be there. We want it to be fair and balanced and well-rounded, and we really don't tolerate um, pe rude people, such as uh, what's happening to Commissioner Hall. You know, it's a civil discourse. And if we need to, we could hire uh, a gunman. I think that's the way, that, I look how we call it a gunman, but I think that's the way that you, uh, that you should proceed with the school district and with their, with their security personnel. Uh, we're not in a position with my office to start going out and providing security. And you do need to talk to school because anything yeah. that does happen, they become liable too. I know you're on the board. We already did our certificate of insurance for you know millions well, of dollars. Well, that, that's one thing, but if something does get out of control there, the school district, being, being a part of that when they got sued the last time for doing a construction project, I will mm -hmm. tell you that if something gets out of control at that school, you know, I don't expect it will, but thank you. Well, we'll, we'll work with the district. Again, you know, and, and I give you all credit for coming, and I thank you for coming and sharing your concerns. But again, you know, you are the good people, and there's other good people out there, but you are the good people that have come forward. There is a lot of people out there that are just real hateful and doing things they shouldn't be doing. Yes. Have you considered changing the time of these meetings from 9 o'clock in the morning till maybe an evening hour? So that more people would be available to come to these meetings and get the information that you have to give them? Yeah, as I said at the last meeting, uh, our meetings, first of all, they're advertised for the year, so they've already been pre-advertised. Second of all, uh, a, a commissioner's meeting has to be during the working hours of the, of the uh, courthouse. And that's set by legislation. That's not something we Which, would uh, what are the working hours? 9, nine, to, four, or nine to 4 30. So maybe 4 30, 4 o'clock would be more. Well, if I could have a meeting in a half hour, that would be okay. <laughs> but, you know, chances of having a meeting in a half hour is not going to happen. So, well, we will continue to get the information out as, just as we have. And I, you know, and we try to encourage these companies to tell us what's going on. And if they don't tell us, they don't tell us. There's nothing. 
I can't waterboard them to try and tell me things. I, mean. I, I understand that you have to defend your family and, and protect your family, but also as a county commissioner, you need to protect your citizens of the county. And well, I don't think there's also. ever a question of that. And if you know me well enough, you know the things I've done in this county and in my communities, so that wouldn't even be a question. Any other questions? Yes. I, I want to say I'm sorry to hear that you're being threatened and your family's being threatened. That's totally unacceptable. And um, I know most of us don't want to be part of that. And um, I thank you for doing the best you can under those circumstances. And I'm just uh, wondering what about using like the courtroom? Can we, is it where you can have all kinds of security and you have the entrance security and it's much bigger room. It holds maybe a couple of hundred people if we need a meeting using the courtroom. I remember using the courtroom years ago for a meeting, that we had a public meeting. Could that we policy has changed, hasn't it? Yeah, policy has changed. The problem with that is that there's, with, uh, there's just too much issue right now with, with people in the public you don't know and people bringing things in that are non-detectable and getting in. And then the courtroom, and that's why the courtrooms have been off limits. Oh, so they can't have a special meeting that county commissioners requesting it. And what about um, any news from Tyler Corners at all? Any response to any of you no, in the past um, two weeks? They're not, you know, the only information we got was the same that they just posted on their website, um, what was it, a week ago, when they said they were going to, what was it, the last thing we said that in two days they were going to tell us all was going on, and then in two, three, three days they said, oh, gee, we don't have anything to tell you. We're going to tell you in the future or something like that. That's the last information. Mm. That yeah, they're got. going to be transparent, allegedly, right. in the fall. Right. I know that uh, Commissioner uh, Commissioner Warren, and I can't speak for her. She's not here today. Uh, but I do know that she has tried to reach out but has not gotten any additional information. Yeah, because we've left comments. You know, I've left comments, others, and we get no response at all. Right. So it's a, it's un, kind of a strange group. Right. that they're hiding like this. We got re recon down in King of Prussia. Yes. And, you know, and I don't want to, I'm not trying to desensitize it or, or say that, you know, it's not what everybody thinks it is, but, hmm. you know, there's just a few things that still don't add up. I mean, this hmm. company only came in existence last July. It's not like they've been... One year. Yeah, it's not like... A year you ago, know, yeah. And the other thing that kind of throws me off is they're investors. Investors don't usually build things. I mean, they invest in projects, but they usually don't... Investors don't build things. So there's still a lot of things, a lot of dots that are not connecting right now as to what's going on. Um, and again, not getting any information. You know, as I said in the last meeting, um, at the end of uh, April, beginning of May, when uh, I said it in the, in the press in, in Scranton, you know, uh -huh. the, they've got to come forward, they've got to tell people what's going on. And that's the march that we have constantly with people when they do come to the county is we say, you need to go to the municipality, you need to let them know what you're doing, they're gonna, you want to do in the area, and let uh -huh. them know what's going on. And, and some do, and, and some come here, and they do do that. Some come here and disappear. Others don't even come here, and then we find out that they're in somebody's community. So uh, there is no, unless they are doing a land subdivision or doing something like that, there's no um, criteria for them really to come to the county and say, hey, you know, I'm doing this. There's businesses that pop up and people's houses and all over the place. There's a guy over in Great Bend that's burning copper wire in a 55 gallon drum. And uh, you know, I've got a neighbor that burns his garbage every night at eight o'clock at night so I can close my windows. Um, so. And that's that's perfectly legal? He can well, do that? It's up to the township or borough to right. put an ordinance on that. Right. So, so there's, no there's people that take their wood burning the stoves now they have outside and burn their wood and then they throw their garbage in with it to burn it up. Mm -hmm. And we you don't know, have any ordinances against that. You and mean. a lot of this, too, when you look at it, you know, you look at our society, we're such a wasteful society. We, we throw so much away. If you look at a, a country like Japan, uh, and by the way, Japan has hundreds of incinerators, and uh, their biggest one is in Hiroshima, which is basically a visitor's tour site and a health center, too. Uh, they've got some technology there that's a lot different than you'd see in the United States, which makes it a lot different. Uh, but uh, like in that country, 
a household family in that country produces 25% of the, of the garbage that a family in the United States does. There's mandatory recycling from the, from the country itself. Uh, you know, you have to recycle. Each person has to have their own compost. So they've gone all out to make sure that what they do is good. And again, you know, these are things we need to be leading back to our state reps and our federal reps, and especially with the recycled stuff into the dump. Stop throwing it all in the garbage. Stop, you know, as we did with the sheriff and the DA, stop throwing your medicines down the toilet that's going into our water system mm. and contaminating our water source. All those things, we are such a wasteful nation when it comes to garbage. And, mm. you know, people say, well, you know, well, they need another expansion on the landfill. Well, they need another expansion on landfill because everybody's throwing everything away. They buy more than they need, and they throw it away. Hmm. And, and we don't recycle properly, and that's a huge problem. Our recycle center does not survive on the recycling done in this county, and it should. If people were recycling, it would at least be a break-even facility or make a little bit of money out of it. But hmm. it can't because people don't recycle. I dare you to drive around on garbage day and count on one block the number of recycling bins that are out. I mean, I, I drive here every week, every day, and on garbage days I drive through the towns, and let me tell you, there's sometimes you don't need both hands to count them. Now you when know, people take it outside, and people don't want to get, pay to get rid of their garbage, so they take it out in the backyard and set it on fire. Well, I go to the South Montrose Recycling Center, mm -hmm. and especially on the weekend, it's totally full. It's like overflowing all the bins. That's because they all dump on Friday, that's why. And then during the week, there's plenty going on too. So well, this, yeah, people right, are recycling. There's I was, a lot of recycling, but not as much as it should be. Are, are you saying it's less, as it, is it less now than a year ago or two years ago, or is it the same? Well, it's hard, it's hard to tell on the tonnage. Uh, the value of it is down, of course, which is uh, you know, a problem. The price of tin and the price of, uh, of everything else is down. But uh, uh, as far as the volumes, they're not what they should be. We have lost some of the volumes to New York State and to uh, some of the volume down to, uh, to um, uh, Scranton. So we don't even know what those volumes are anymore. You know, they don't get reported to us. So we don't know, you know how much recycling is done in certain communities because we don't get the information. Because of uh, independent garbage pickers? Well, because we... the, the carriers, it's easier if you're picking up in Fort City or Clifford or like that. It's a heck of a lot easier and closer to go to Scranton than it is to take and come to Montrose to get rid of your, the, uh, the recycling. Because they go to the landfills either in Scranton or right. in Binghamton? So they go to the recycling centers down there. You know, the same with the north the western part of the county with, you know, Chocanut and, mm. and uh, uh, little Meadows, it's easier for them to go right up into uh, Half Lake and then it is to bring it all back down here. Mm. Um, so, you know, yeah, a lot of concerns, a lot of, a lot of big concerns, and we, and we have a lot of big concerns. And we are trying to do everything we can at this point to review it, to take what actions we can, and try to, again, to work on to make sure that we comply with our um, comprehensive plan and, and do what the uh, municipalities and everybody wants. Now when, when uh, Mike Jean Greco, the solicitor for the county, got the phone call or a letter, who, who contacted him from Tyler Corners to set up the meeting in April? I, I don't know. You'd have to ask him. Um, I don't know if it was uh, their, one of their uh, attorneys or one of them trying to reach out to find out you know, uh, who they go to or who the people are. So can you find that out? Because he's the solicitor for the county. Can you ask him directly who contacted you from that group and how were you contacted and what did they say? Why did they want that meeting? And then he contacted you. Well, I think Tyler he has already answered that question in their first website report. Well, I want it from Mike because Tyler Corners is giving their information, but then what did Mike receive? From them. Well, the only thing I can tell you is what I've talked to Mike since then, and it was the same thing that he got a phone call of a company that was investors that were looking at our area and wanted to come up as a courtesy call to take a look at our area. And that's what it was about. And so now we just need the names. Who called? Who made that phone call? It would be interesting. See if it's. I'll if see it's if he's got yeah, it. see if you can find that out. 
because uh, Mike can be hard to get a hold of. Okay. One last thing. First, thank you for your patience. And secondly, at the last meeting, uh, I brought to your attention that, that incinerator at East Liverpool, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Did you have a chance to um, look into that and the, the studies? Yeah, I'm familiar. You know, I've looked at that one. I've looked at the one in, uh, in um, there's a couple other ones I've looked at. I've also been checking on the ones up in Binghamton and Broome County, trying to get a handle on those two. Uh, there's already some up in Binghamton area. Trying to get some information. I think either Binghamton or Broome County has one themselves that I'm trying to get information on. Today. Do they have industrial incinerators? I have no idea. That's what I'm trying to figure out. In Broome County? All I know is there's incinerators in Broome County. I don't know what kind they are. Mm. But did you know the cancer clusters and the illness and the incidents that took place at that East Liverpool uh, incinerator? I looked at the reports on that okay. and, and did see what it, what it did say. Thank you. And, um, you know, and then, then I've looked at other ones in other areas that have different information. So, you know, again, you know, I don't know the technology or what they're doing or who they're doing or what they're doing. And like I said, I, you know, the one in Japan, according to the report I got on the one in Japan, uh, they have uh, gone to the point where they've been eliminate, have eliminated 100% of the dioxins that come out of the uh, out of the, the unit. Now I don't know how they did it. Well, we can ask Dr. Khan at that question right. on the 16th. And what they've done is um, this one in Hiroshima that they did. And, you know, I, again, so you're talking apples and oranges again. I mean, the, the Japanese government has certain restrictions uh, and certain requirements versus our government has different ones. So when you compare that one, does that mean that they take, if, if that is one um, that does not produce any dioxins, and actually, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's a trash incinerator. And what they do is they create, according to the report I read, it creates a sandy sludge that comes out of it, and they use that to make their roads. Indeed, because the countries that are so hmm. small do not have landfills, right. and they can't take the fly right. ash and put but it in the landfill. But they have gone to the point of making sure that the government's been involved in to make sure the technology is there to take and do what needs to be done to make them uh, apparently safe. Now, this one that, that they said they have is even on their tourist hotspot, and that it's um, some kind of architectural wonder that everybody goes to see, and they've got fitness centers and everything else. Now, I don't know. This is all that I'm getting out of a small report, and I can't, can't prove any of the information or disprove any information. It's like the Internet. You know, everything you read on the Internet is not true. I'm sorry. For those that you think that the internet's true, and if you read it there, it's gospel, you should take and run with it, believe me, it's not. So, you know, I get the information, and now it's trying to find sources to try and collaborate the information to make sure it's real or it's not real. Just like the information I got off about the ones that, that you had mentioned. You know, the information's there, and now it's trying to collaborate the information and make out sure that it's all accurate and what it is and, and what it is. So, any other questions, comments? Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? All right. We are adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. I wasn't home. There you go. I wasn't home. I got another tree to come down. <laughs>